International Journal of Health Policy and Management Quality and speed are our culture and the keys to our success. Welcome to the audio summary section of the International Journal of Health Policy and Management. Hello, my name is Roy Small and I'm a policy specialist on health with the United Nations Development Program. Today, I will discuss an article that I co-authored with Mao Suzuki and Douglas Webb that analyzes stakeholder influence of the 2018 UN Political Declaration on Non-Communicable Diseases. Our analysis is highly relevant in today's global health landscape. This year's UN General Assembly featured three high-level meetings dedicated to health issues, a record high number. Deliberations on pandemics, universal health coverage, and tuberculosis each culminated in political declarations. The reviews of these declarations, however, have been mixed. Some have called the declarations a missed opportunity and lackluster, falling short on gender, human rights, and concrete accountabilities. So what explains this series of apparently weak political declarations for health? Well, one explanation can be traced back to global health governance itself. Over the past couple of decades, there has been a shift away from multilateralism towards multi-stakeholderism. So whereas before decisions were made by a group of nations, now governments, businesses, non-governmental organizations, and individuals all partake in decision-making. This more inclusive transition comes with the promise of better results in an increasingly interconnected world. However, it also poses risks. For example, it introduces conflicts of interest that are potentially unsolvable. Our paper sheds light on the implications of multi-stakeholderism for global health responses. We assess the consultative process of the drafting and negotiations that led to the 2018 UN Political Declaration on NCDs, and we ask three main questions. First, how did policy positions differ by stakeholder group? Second, how were any such differences handled? And third, which stakeholder groups appeared to carry the most influence? To answer this, we analyzed 159 documents submitted from the various stakeholders during the negotiation process. Upon outlining the positions of different constituencies, we found clearly competing policy positions across stakeholder groups. For example, NGOs in low and middle income countries generally pursued stricter governance of NCD risk factors. They also called for better management of conflicts of interest that occur when certain commercial actors are involved in health policymaking. On the other hand, the private sector and high-income countries generally opposed greater restrictions on commercial actors. They emphasized the importance of multi-stakeholder partnerships. Now to assess influence, we then examined how the declaration text evolved from its draft to its final form. This included identifying additions and omissions and examining clarity of language. The pattern of changes indicated that positions with no clear opponent tended to be included, whereas the contested positions were either not included or included with ambiguous language. As a result, many cost-effective policy options to address NCDs were not well represented in the declaration. An example is taxation of unhealthy products. Gaps also remained in four crucial areas of industry interference, funding, accountability, and civil society involvement. And concerns around conflicts of interest were inadequately addressed. In summary, it appears that the inclusive and consensus-based consultation likely reinforced power asymmetries. It also diluted critical strategies for tackling NCDs. In exploring the way forward, we do not call for multi-stakeholderism to be rejected. Rather, we called for renewed efforts to better balance inclusive governance with effective governance. This involves efforts at the international, national, and local levels to ensure guardrails around multi-stakeholderism. For instance, 
there's an urgent need to reevaluate engagement criteria around commercial actors with a history of undermining health efforts. There's also a need to address power dynamics, potential biases, and ambiguities in multi-stakeholder consultations. An evidence-based way of resolving policy disputes, one that goes beyond mere consensus, is essential. Multiple commentaries to our paper build on our suggestions and elaborate specific options. We encourage you to read these, and also please read our response. In this, we question whether inclusive governance is currently being valued higher than the right to health in today's form of multi-stakeholderism. We also stress that countries and communities must no longer be denied the opportunities of more ambitious and more progressive political declarations. Thank you.